Hello, my name is Jimmy Vegas and welcome to this, the first in this series of video tutorials for Unity 5. Okay, so in this series, um, it is basically a reboot of a, a rather old series that we did, for Beginners, except in this series we'll be learning a whole lot more better methods, um, ways to make Unity look nicer, as the, um, the leap from Unity 4 to Unity 5 is much better, so I figured we'd uh, run this in Unity 5 and see how we go. Okay, so Unity is an engine which can be used for gaming, for creating different types of media, things like that, but in this series, like I say, we'll be doing uh, a game. So if you've downloaded Unity, uh, you have it open uh, for the first time, you'll be presented with presumably uh, something a little bit like this screen here. Um, all you need to do is if you put in your project name just here, so you can call it for example my first game and in here put the location of where you want to save it. Now I already have gone ahead and done this so it does take a couple of minutes just to set everything up uh, so, so uh, no time gets wasted I've like I said, already set it up you don't need to worry about anything here make sure you do have 3d selected but don't worry about asset packages we'll be sorting that out at a later date so once you've done that click create project after a couple of minutes you should be presented with this screen or something very very similar I'm going to run through this screen now and what we have available and quickly show you uh, a few different things of how we can get started with the game. So over here, as you can see, we have the hierarchy. Now the hierarchy is where we store all our game elements, whether it's um, models or objects or anything like that, we store them here. Over here is the inspector pane. So when we click anything in our hierarchy, you'll notice that details appear here in our inspector pane. Now there are two ways you can view this and throughout this series we will be doing both. Firstly is the normal view, secondly is the debug view and you can switch between the two by using this little button up here. For now I'm going to leave it in normal view. This big window in the middle is our scene window and next to it is our game window. These two are the most important things within Unity. Obviously, this is where you build your game. So every object in the hierarchy exists, or should exist, here in the scene window. Down here, we have our project window. This is where all our assets stay. So when we import anything, for example a texture or a script, this is where it will appear down here. Next to it is our console. We don't need to worry too much about this. When we have errors or there's a problem or something, it usually appears here. Okay, so firstly, let's delve into it, shall we? Let's create a game object. Up here, click Game Object, then click 3D Object, and then click on Cube. You'll notice over here it appears in the hierarchy and also appears here in our scene. I'm quickly going to rename, so right click here and go to rename, or you can press F2. And I'm currently going to call this ground 001. Okay, so over here you'll notice we have position 000. This means it is dead center of our scene. Rotation is also 0, 0, 0, which means it's not rotated at all, it's flat, it's perfectly straight. The scale is 1, 1, 1. This means that all sides are equal. So we'll play around with the transform for now. So position, let's change the position and let's type in 25. You'll notice it disappears from our scene. However, if we use our middle mouse wheel, and scroll out, eventually you'll see it just here. Okay, up here we have the hand. Click on the hand and then left click in your scene and move the mouse around to drag your scene around and position it just right. 
Use the mouse wheel again to zoom back in and use the hand to move everything back into perspective like so. If you right click on your mouse, hold the right click and move the mouse around, you can look around the scene on the pivotal point you are currently sat at. You can look up, you can look down, you can look right and left and all around. Okay, so we'll click back on the cross to modify this and let's set the position back to zero. So instead of having to do all that again, just to find our cube, if you select it in the hierarchy and press the F key, you focus on it like so. If it doesn't work in the hierarchy, click on the object and press F key again. It will focus on your object. Another way of doing it, so let's pull ourselves over here somewhere. You can simply double click the object in the hierarchy and it will always focus on that particular object. Okay, so let's play around with some rotation. Let's change the Y axis to, let's say, 60. You'll notice it flips around a bit. So let's also change the Z or Z axis to 50. I will point something out when I say Z. I am British. Uh, here we say Z. I realize you uh, North Americans and quite a few other people in the world say Z. If I say Z, I do mean Z. If I say Z, I do mean Z. Same thing. So yes, as you can see, that's flipped and rotated. So let's take our hand and let's have a bit of a look down upon it. Very nice. So we played a bit with rotation. So let's set that back to zero. And let's refocus on our cube. Now let's set the scale. As you can see, the scale, if you look at the red arrow just here, an indication tells you that that is the x-axis, which is this. So if we change this x-axis, it will get longer this way. If we change the y-axis, the uh, green arrow, it will get higher. And if we change the z-axis, or z-axis, just here, you'll see this is blue. That will change this way. So let's zoom out a little. Let's set our scale on the x-axis to 10. And you'll see it's changed. It's gone long this way. Let's change our y-axis to, let's say, I don't know, for example, 5. You'll see it's got taller. So now it looks a bit like a wall. We don't, want quite, uh, we don't quite want a wall at the moment, so we've named it ground. We'll get around to that in just a second. Z or Z axis, let's change that also to 10, just like our X. And you'll see it gets longer. Okay, so as we want this ground for now, let's change this to 0 0.25. So we've got a nice thin ground. So let's double click in the hierarchy and have a nice look. So if we shift our camera around, our position that looks okay as um, our floor for now, our ground. Um, I'm, I'm positive that some people will say, oh, well, why don't you use a plane or why don't you use terrain as the ground? Uh, we will be getting around to using terrain as a, a ground, as the, the uh, thumbnail for this video is actually what we will be creating, and that is terrain. I'm simply using this as ground just to quickly get you accustomed to Unity 3D, uh, Unity 5, sorry. So if we go to Game Object again, go to 3D Object, and go to Cube. You'll notice our cube appears below here. And you'll notice the automatic position has been set to these figures here. Now it's good practice when using Unity to zero out all the uh, position axis. So zero, 
0, 0. Let's rename and we'll call this wall 0, 0, 1. And hit enter. Okay, so you have your cube here. If you hold control and then pull one of the arrows, it will do something called snapping. Now, snapping is when it shifts in a certain um, length, if it were. So, as we currently have the length set as 1, it will shift in multiples of 1. So, to change that, if you go to edit, and down the bottom you have snap settings and it will pop up in a little window just here so if we change these settings to let's say 0 0.5 on the X 0 0.5 on the Y and 0 0.5 on the Z and close it will snap it like so so it's half the length of what it, current, of what it previously was Okay, so as I know here, the gap is 0 0.25, it's easy to go to our snap settings and change to 0 0.25, 0 0.25, 0 0.25. The reason I know it's 0 0.25 is because we set the height, the y-axis of our ground as 0 0.25, which means hopefully now if we hold control and pull down, our cube should hopefully, but it isn't, <laughs> it's not to worry, we can sort that out. It should be lying flush with our ground, but that's not to worry. Let's pull it down one more time. Not quite, but we can pull up without holding control to about there. So if we zoom in, we can have a quick look. I'm not going to be absolutely perfect in this tutorial. Perfection is something that takes a lot of time. You can play around. Okay, so we're not quite flush. However, we can sort that out. We can do different things. So what we can do is we can set our ground scale to 1. And now if we go to edit, snap settings, and let's set everything back to one. The snap settings will come in very, very handy uh, in the future. So for now, let's delete our wall, even though I felt it wrong. Let's go to game object. Let's go to 3D object and cube. Let's set our position back to zero, zero, zero. Let's rename and we'll call this wall 001. Hit enter. Okay, so if you hold control and pull the arrow key up, like so, on the y axis, you'll see that it is now perfectly flush with the floor. And you'll notice a shadow appearing around. The reason for that shadow is our directional light just here. And you'll see that it does use soft shadows. We'll be dealing more with shadows in a different tutorial as we get further along. We'll be doing different things with them, playing around and seeing where we get with them. Okay, so for now, let's play with this wall. Let's make this wall more like a wall rather than a cube. So we want to build a wall just along here. So we'll change the Z or Z axis. And we'll change it to maybe, let's say, 6. Uh, let's change our Y axis. We want it taller. So let's have it as maybe 4. And we'll make it thinner. So we'll change it to 0 0.5. So now we have a wall. OK, so we want to pull our wall up. So hold control as usual 
and pull up on the green arrow the Y axis. Okay, so 4 looks too tall for our wall. So let's change this to maybe 3. Okay, so that looks much better. That looks fine. Okay, so let's hold control and pull our wall this way. And now what we'll do is we will hold control again and press D on the keyboard. Now what this does, you'll notice up here, is creates wall 002. That has duplicated our wall. Even though this still looks like there's one, there is actually two there. As if you hold control and pull this out now, you'll see we have actually duplicated our wall just here. Okay, so the final thing we're going to do now is we're going to create a back wall just here and then we're going to group our walls together. And that is really, really easy to do. So if we take this wall 2 that we're on, hold control, press D again, and you'll see it duplicates once again. So let's hold control and pull our wall out to here. And what we'll do is there are two different ways you can tackle this. You can either change the scale or you can rotate the wall. We're going to rotate as we've not really played too much with rotation. Okay, so you want to rotate on the Y axis as we want to spin it round here. So if we change the Y axis to 90, you'll see it goes on its side. So if you hold control and pull the back wall outwards to about there, you'll be able to see how it looks there. Okay, so let's pull this wall out a little more to about there. Let's, let's see how close is it? Okay, so yes, let's change the size of this wall just here from 6 to 5. That's still a little too short, as you can see, gaps. So let's change it to 5.5. And that fits just nicely there. So let's change our snap settings. Once again, let's go to 0 0.25, 0 0.25, 0 0.25. And let's snap this wall into position, like so. So you can see everything is now nice up against each other. So let's go back to this. I always like to keep it as one just to be on the safe side. Okay, so the final thing we'll do is if you go to game object and create empty. Now notice this creates an empty game object just here. Okay, so what we'll do is we will rename. Oops, rename there, and we'll call this. Uh, just call it walls for now. And all we need to do is if we drag and drop wall one here, wall two, and wall three, you'll notice they all appear under here. This is called parent and child. So the arrow collapses everything. So everything under walls now is classified as one object. If you click the arrow, you can select each individual object quite easily. So for example, if we wanted to move our entire wall section this way, rather than moving one by one, you can simply select the walls here, hold control, and you can shift everything all at once. That saves having to worry about moving things individually. Okay, so we'll leave that tutorial there for now. Uh, like I say, what we will be building looks exactly like what the thumbnail is for this video. Uh, that is where we will be going. That's how colourful it will be. We'll be dealing with multiple different things that we haven't dealt with in previous tutorials. Uh, so yeah, that's the end of this first tutorial. I do hope it was educational for you. I hope you've learned a few new things. And I hope you continue to follow the series. Uh, thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you next time.